I know this is a little anticlimactic. You come on, I got like shadows everywhere. I gotta move stuff, right? I'm trying to do this new little setup here where we can have these conversations every now and then, but this is the raw version. Um, raw version is just like the preliminary version before we get started into the real, the real. So um, for all of those, you, for all of you who are already here, <laughs> all six of you <laughs> who are already here, um, this entire conversation uh, is um, basically my thoughts over the last few days, I'm going to think about this a lot, uh, just issues that are plaguing the fashion community at large. And um, we want to do this more often, just having conversations and doing Q&A on YouTube. So this is just one of those conversations that came up. We have, we have a whole story written on, about this aspect, um, but I wanted to go ahead and get some of your real-time thoughts on... Uh, you know, real time questions, real time thoughts on this. So it's going. <laughs> Hi, Harrison. <laughs> um, so uh, ha let's have at it. So uh, the name of this today's topic is the three biggest issues that are destroying the fashion community. And when we talk about the fashion community, what we're really talking about is uh, the people who talk about fashion every single day. Right. Um, people like myself, people um, who enjoy fashion, people who say that they're just have a passion for this, for this industry or for design, fashion design and whatnot. But one of the things that we kind of discovered over time, just everybody that um, I talk to who's in the community itself, is there is this split. There's this divide between um, street luxury designer and what's pure fashion and that is probably one of the biggest issues just at the heart of everything because from that become there there's judgment uh from that there's um there's arguments and debates over what's valid and what's not uh there's you know who's dressing better who's doing this better and i think that that's number one the number one thing is that th this this split in fashion where something has to look good or something has to look universally fly right everything er you know if you're not wearing something that i like i have to say something about it because it makes me feel better about my fashion decisions or about my style decisions that's one. That's that's part of it. And then there's the oh, that's it's like when I had a problem when you know cats were talking about uh, like when Virgil Abloh went to LV, and then the first thing that you hear from you know the purest community, the purest fashion community, like the designer fashion community, was like I can't stand that Virgil is bringing streetwear streetwear to designer fashion and i'm like the first dude to be like yo it's all fashion all of it is valid right all of it whether you like street or whether you like you know designer and, and or whether you like I, I don't i don't know what you like right it doesn't matter whether you like street designer goth whatever genres or whatever lifestyles that you're about whatever it is that you like it's all valid. It's all a part of the same conversation. And I think that people just don't want to have those conversations because it it's like a smack in their face, especially if you're coming from like a designer field and you're so gung ho uh, about designer fashion. And you're like, yo, this is just not valid. Um, we could talk about it like, yeah, the word that we usually use is either elitism or gatekeeping. But I think it goes deeper than that because you also have the same arguments happening in street, right? The same arguments are happening within the street fashion apparatus, whether you come from one generation or the other, right? Um, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have an individual, say you have an individual for uh, who's like, Yo, OG Bape is better than New Bape. And I'm like, okay, that's 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 your opinion. Or what you wearing, I don't like what you wearing, so what you wearing is whack. I'm like, why does that have to enter the conversation? We don't have to 
We don't have to come at each other like that, right? We don't have to come at each other, even in street, where it's like, oh, that's not, that's not fly. So, you know, whatever it is that you're doing just, you know, is whack. And we have a, and, and we have a way of making sure that everybody knows that. And we have to, we have to validate our own fashion sis, our own fashion tastes. And that is something that is incredibly, incredibly, it, it, it's, it's incredibly backwards. It's regressive, right? Because you're not allowing people to explore, right? You're not allowing people to explore because you want everybody, it's almost like you want everybody to have a cookie cutter representation of what this look, what, what you're supposed to look like. And, and you know, anybody who talks to me seriously knows that I have a problem when individuals say, you know, even YouTube channels, when they're like, you know, the five, you know, the 10 pieces every man should have, or, you know, every guy should have this in their closet, or every girl should, you know, every lady needs to have one of these. I, I, I particularly hate that, but that doesn't come from YouTube. That actually comes from magazine media, uh, magazines and all that, like Vogue and stuff like they started that. They, they're the ones who started that, but they tried to, they tried to flip their tune uh, once we got a little bit more open, right? Um, and I try to be very careful uh, with, with how I put things, right? I try to be very careful with how I, how I put things, right? Like I'll say, you know, 10 trends you should ditch, but within any video, we're always like, yo, man, just, just wear what you want. <laughs> like you shouldn't worry about what I have to say about fashion because All right, so we're back, hopefully. Um, so that's a big issue. Uh, that's a really big issue. The whole idea that we have to validate each other. Um, yeah, I don't know. Keezy, am I back on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my bad, right? So it's a big issue. It's a big issue that we uh, that we have to deal with. There, there needs to be some type of respect that we have uh, for each other's fashion choices. Um, right. Uh, it, it, it just, that's, that's, that's where it all, that's where it all, you know, boils down to like, we just have to have respect, um, for each other's fashion choices. Like, yo, that's, that's him. That's what he do. I don't care. I wouldn't wear it. There's a lot of things I wouldn't wear. Like me and Keezy don't have the same style, but I respect what he does because what he does is what he is he enjoys and it and it and it gives me more insight into that style. I don't want everybody dressing the same. I really don't. I don't want everybody thinking the same. I don't want everybody dressing the same. Uh I don't want any of that. I don't want none of that. I don't want people speaking this. I don't want people from the same area. I don't want everybody looking the same. That's why, you know, I, I had to take a break from Instagram for so long because you you, you you always see the same people doing the same things all the time. And everybody's doing, you know, everybody's copy, uh, uh, copycat, right? Everybody's doing the same thing. And so, um, the reason why I'm getting cut off because I just got two phone calls and, uh, I'm going to have to cut this short in a minute. So sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> um right um so it's <laughs> i know it's just it's awful anyway number two um what is the number two issue i think the number two issue uh the number two issue is hyper consumerism i mean that's that's basically uh that's 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 you got uh that's, 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 you guys know what that is. Uh, in, in better words, it's, it's hype. Hype is killing the fashion community. And a lot of people would like to point the finger at, at street, but, uh, it's not street's fault. It's not street's fault. Um, no, it's just, I have a light right here. Okay. <laughs> Why would I bleach my face? Right. Um, <laughs> come on now, come on now, like, come on, come on, <laughs> right? It's a light, 
<laughs> like uh, hyper consumerism and hype is definitely uh, killing us. Um, and the reason why it's killing us is because everybody's going for the same stuff, right? Everybody's going for the same stuff. Nobody's exploring, nobody's discovering. And as a result, people are able to take advantage of individuals who are all buying the same thing. And this ultimately is going to kill everything. Like it's gonna destroy everything, right? <laughs> it's gonna destroy everything because we can't even have a conversation about about discovery because everybody's like, yo, I want that dunk or I want this shoe. And those of us who aren't about that life, like myself, I ain't going for dunks. I don't have not one dunk in my in my closet, right? And that's because I don't like the sneaker. I'm not going to buy it simply because they're out there and they're hot right now. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't buy them. I'm like, why not go for something else if you can't get this thing because everybody wants it? Everybody's complaining about the resale, the resale community. Right, it threw me off. <laughs> everybody's talking about the resale community and it's bad and whatnot, but a lot of people don't understand that there's a lot of stuff on like resale markets like StockX that's under retail. Like you can buy a ton of stuff under retail, but a lot of people decide not to get it because it's not hot. But if you just buy something that fits your um, that fits your kind of style, then you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to worry about what's hot right now. And, I, and that hyper consumerism towards the same things uh, is really killing everything um, to the point where it's you know, it really feeds into that number one reason, that gatekeeping, that elitism. You have to all be wearing the same thing in order to be justified in, in style, right? The newest thing is what's in style, like that style, not your own style, just the newest stuff. And therefore, hyper-consumerism is a result of that. People have to buy what's hot right now because if they don't buy what's hot right now, then they're behind, Right? then they're behind. And so when, and, and that's the main thing. People don't like being behind. They don't like being behind. They don't like being behind. Now, I mean, I'm going to say that three times. Nobody likes being behind. Nobody likes doing any of that stuff. Uh, they just like to be fashion forward. Right? And I believe that it's going to come to a point where you're just gonna have people who don't care. I mean, I think we're at that point already. I think people are starting to like not care. You have individuals like my boy Ayo, he's like, yo, I just deleted the sneakers app. I'm never going to buy from them ever again. Like I'm not gonna touch them. And I can confirm that like for me, right? For me, it literally is like dog, I got this platform. Who can I who can I collab with to get some of the like any pair that I want? <laughs> right? Like I'm in that headspace right now because I'm not I I don't want to compete with individuals for things that I would want. Right? I don't want to I don't want to compete. I understand that feeling. I don't want to have to get on the sneakers app and just and just hope, right? I don't want to do that. Um I don't I don't, right? So I, I, I buy other stuff. I, I do other things. I took a break from sneakers for a long minute. Um, and, and so for me, it's coupled with the hyper, hyper consumerism, uh, coupled with, you know, this, this judginess, it all boils down to the essence of the culture. And this is the number three thing the three the biggest issue um that i feel um really plagues uh the fashion community at large and that is what belongs what belongs to who who owns this and really the conversation about culture in general and the and this is a conversation that nobody likes to have but everybody brings up right everybody brings it up 
but nobody really wants to have an in-depth conversation about it. And that's the whole idea of, and I hate to bring it, I hate to put it like this, but this is the only way um, for people to understand this idea of appropriation. And we actually have a video coming up about this very issue, right? This idea of, yo, this style belongs to these people, therefore you need to acknowledge that. And by acknowledging that, you somehow give validation to those people and give them their culture back. And I'm and and it and it really is an issue in fashion. It's like a really big issue in fashion. And, it, and they talk about it all the time. And I have a problem with it. Like I have I personally have a problem with it because if you believe that anybody uh anybody is taking somebody's culture um, based on fashion, then you're giving strength to the individuals that are that you believe are taking it and which means that your culture isn't strong enough to begin with, in my opinion, right? I know a lot of people will argue that point, but if you're if your culture is strong enough, then you shouldn't have to fight at all. To let people know, yeah, yeah, that came from this. And I think the industry, I think that, I think people want to be a part of the industry so much, right? You have people like, yo, the industry needs to be more diverse, right? Like I had this conversation with somebody last night and you have people who are like, yo, the industry needs to be more diverse. And I'm like, why don't you just make your own segment of the industry? Like, why don't you, why, why do you want to be a part of that? If you, you, why do you want to be a part of something where you were never accepted? Why don't you just make your, create your own area, right? Um, why don't you just create your own area of fashion? Like, why don't you just cultivate that? Yeah, it might take longer and you might not get as many people yet, but you making your own thing. You making your own little area of fashion. You don't need them to validate you, right? And so anytime that they do something that that takes from a culture, it's easier to fight because y'all are already doing it over here. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are already doing it over here. You got your own little area where everybody's doing their own thing. You just got to make it so great that nobody can deny it. There's a lot of half-ass shit going on. Uh, excuse my language, but there's a lot of half. Uh, there's a lot of half-ass shit going on where people are just saying, "Oh, they want to be a part." You know, they we we need. Yeah, we should make our own community of fashion and whatnot. But they take they cut corners. They don't want to be as as sophisticated as the big industry, and as a result. They just run to the run to that industry because there's more history there. There's more sophistication there. The LVs are there. The Gucci's are there. And I want to be okay with buying Gucci, Birkins, and you know Telfair bags. Like I want to be okay. I, I want to buy that stuff because it already has a legacy behind it. Instead of building your own legacy, you would rather want to be a part of somebody else's legacy. And so you need that industry to be more diverse because you you want to feel like you're a part of it. That shit is killer to me. I, 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 don't, I don't understand that at all. I don't understand that at all. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand that. You want to be okay. That's why you want the, you know what I'm saying? That's why you want to be a part of it. Like that, I'm just putting two and two together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just putting two and two together. You would, I, you know what? And I would argue that I don't think it is as hard. I don't think it's hard today. You got so many avenues in social media that you could create your own, your own avenue, your own, your own communities. Like we've proven it here at the casual. We can create our own community here. We created our own community here. We don't need, I don't need hype beast to validate the casual. I don't need complex to validate the casual. You guys make it. You guys make the casual. You may look at Hypebeast. You may look at Complex. You may look at other YouTubers. You may do all that. But we don't need, I don't need to be validated by those individuals. We can, we can work together to create something bigger. 
that's always great. I can work with some of these big companies to make something better, something bigger, but I don't need to be validated by them. You don't need to be validated by them. You can create your own space, have your own thing going, and whatever, what have you. I'm, I'm sitting here in Tokyo. People ask me all the time about how, yo, how do Japanese people treat you, right? How do, how do Japanese people treat you? It's like, I'm going to be real with you. A lot of these Japanese companies, they know who I am. They've seen the channel. They know what's going on. And a lot of them don't hit me up. I've had like three companies since I've started this. Three companies since I've started this who actually hit me up and said, yo, we would like to do some work with you. Just three since we started this. Since we started it, only three. So the fact that Japanese companies, we're in Japan talking about Japanese brands and they're not in large part validating the casual, that says everything, but I don't care, right? We create our own space here. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and that's how I feel about the fashion industry. I feel like, why would I care about what these cats think? Like, why would I care about what these cats think right now? Like, why would I care when, when I got the people? And that's what I, I, I think there's, there's power in people, but the only way that we could put the power in people's hands, and I know this is getting a little bit bigger than what, you know, just fashion, but the only way that you could put power in people's hands is by actually letting people decide and actually letting people understand that, yo, you can make choices and that's a good, that's, that's on you. You can make fashion decisions that are completely opposite than what I do. But I can respect it even if I wouldn't mess with it. But like, yo, that's dope. But the problem is, is that we don't want to, we don't want it. We don't want it like that. There's, I had a conversation with a, with a, with my consultant the other day. He was just like, yeah, man, people are finding a reason to be mad at each other. You got people try, finding ways to be mad at each other. So you got people who are in the same community that have the same interests that could come together and build something together, but they would rather be at ends with each other. They would rather fight each other over what's hot and what's not. How, how is that possible? You got people, you got people who enjoy the same thing, arguing over what's hot and what's not. It's like, it's like this. It's like I play, I play games every now and then. I play video games every now and then. Uh, so it's like playing Call of Duty, right? You play Call of Duty. Any of you guys out there, uh, um, anybody who's out there who play Call of Duty or something, I don't really play Call of Duty, but you play Call of Duty, right? You got millions of players who play this game. Millions of players who love this game, who come together and play this game together. And yet and still, you have people who get on there who go at each other and, and often cross the line talking about each other you know calling each other out of out of each other's names talking about each other's mom just getting mad and just want to make the other person mad because they lost in they lost the death match or something like that they lost captured a flag i don't know what kind of modes you got in that in that uh in that on that game because i don't play it but i've 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 i've, I've experienced it you got millions of people Millions of people who have the same interests going at each other. Going at each other. Millions of people got the same interests. And don't tell me that fashion ain't the same way. It may be to a lesser degree. But. Pff, millions of people got the same interests going at each other over their interests. That's crazy to me. Yo, they take this culture from me. They they took that culture from me. It's like It's like, yo, man, give respect, give credit where credit is due, right? Right? Give credit where credit is due. And and just respect each other, right? Like you don't, but if they don't, if there's no level of respect, then build your own apparatus. Yes, it's going to take longer. 
Yes, I understand that. It takes a long time to build your own apparatus. But if you are trying to gain the acceptance of people who have never accepted you before, right? Um, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I, I just don't feel like you should waste your time in that. I don't feel like you should waste your time trying to gain the acceptance of people who have never accepted you before. And that goes for anything, especially in the fashion industry. Like, why are we trying to gain, why are we trying to gain the acceptance of individuals that don't want to mess with us? They don't want us there anyway. You know what I'm saying? They don't want you there anyway. You're just going to argue and argue and complain until they let you in. That's like, <laughs> what if you don't want somebody in, you, you don't want somebody in your house, but they keep complaining and complaining and complaining like, yo, let me in, let me in, let me in. You going to let them in? The door locked. You going you gonna to let them in if they just keep complaining? Right? I, I feel like that's a that's a terrible way. <laughs> that's a terrible way to, to view to, to live your life is to is to force people to open the door. Force people to open their doors when they never wanted you in in the first place. So you gotta build your own house. Build your own house and, and become so great. Um Become so great that no one can deny you. I love what you said there, Clifford, because that's something that I say all the time. Just because I disagree with you doesn't mean that I hate you, right? Just because I don't like bait, I don't wear bait, that's not my thing. I do that on purpose, to be honest with you. When I talk about bait, right? When I talk about bait, I do it on purpose. I do it on purpose because I was like, yo, man, just because I say something about it, just because I don't wear it, I don't like it, doesn't mean I hate you. It, it's just that I don't mess with it. That's it. That's it. I don't like dunks. I don't like dunks. That don't mean I hate you. Right? <laughs> that don't mean I hate you. It just means that I don't mess with it. I don't mess with a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like your stuff. Don't mean that I hate you. It just means that, you know, we have different tastes. But hopefully, we can introduce each other to something new. Right? We can we can introduce something to something. Like, if I know that some people like Bape. But I know a lot of other brands that are kind of like Bape that you could be introduced to. Right. So that's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to know about like I'm supposed to feed into it and be like, OK, I know. All right. So you like, babe, here are some other labels that you might like. Right. Here are some other things that you might like. Oh, you like this kind of this African style. You like this African kind of like colorways, these patterns. Here's a here's a designer who's doing it, who's doing who's not only doing a fresh take, but they're also from that culture that you can get it from. Right? It's like, oh, you kind of like this style that you, you like this collection by Marc Jacobs. Okay, so you like this collection by Marc Jacobs that takes a lot of like African influence. Why don't you go ahead and check out Nicholas Daly? Check out Nicholas Daly. Nicholas Daly, he's part of that culture, right? He's part of the music culture, all of that. So you should check him out because he has some great stuff. You got to be willing to put people on. And that's another part about it. You have people out there who are like, Yo, we need to give more, more noise to all these underground designers, right? We need to give more, we need to give more, uh, we need to give more, you know, we need to shine a light on these, on these new designers. And nobody really wants that. Nobody, if you really wanted to shine light on more designers, you would watch stuff with, you know, I know you guys will. But in large part, most people don't care. They don't care about new people. <laughs> they don't care about new people. They care about what people are talking about. That's what they care about. What are people talking about? They don't care about new people. Every time, uh, every time somebody says that, I'm just like, really? Oh, we should give more. 
we should put some more noise on uh on people who on, on new designers is that is that so right is that so is that that was supposed to happen come on now come on come on no no you don't want that if you wanted that if you wanted that you we have so many people so many so many people who were discovered already but the thing is is just like a lot of big designers now and a lot of people who 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 are engaged in who are engaged in fashion they're just being lazy they don't want to have to discover because it takes too long and then when they find the thing that they like and nobody's wearing it why would I wear something that nobody's wearing? Because people are going to think that I'm weird. I'm, a, I'm here to tell you right now, everybody weird. All y'all weird. Everybody's weird. Everybody's weird. You're all strange to me. There is something about you that's strange because ain't nobody the same. Right? <laughs> right? There's something about you that's strange. You better embrace it. You better embrace it. Just embrace it. Just embrace being weird. Do your thing. You ain't got to be like everybody. I'm weird as hell, bro. You know what I'm saying? Don't be lazy. Find something. Find something. Find something. Be weird. Be strange. Be... be and find something and, and and that's that's the whole thing this belongs to who this this is this this is that you know you need to give more credence to these people no you need to put more you need to uh, you need to put more credence on what it is that you like you need to get you need to speak up you know what I'm saying like you need to speak up you speak the hell up. Speak if there's something that people tell me about brands. I love when people tell me about brands that I don't know about. Right? Like I love when people tell me that because I'm like, yo, and I love when people do that because they they always introduce me to something. People who know like how I dress, they always introduce me to something that like they think that I would like. Dog, I, I love that. But one of these days, we're, and that's what you're fighting against. That You're fighting against conformity. That's what you, every single one of you who are, who are fans of fashion, that's what you're fighting against. And you got to be willing to share each other's culture because that's what humans do. Like we share each other's culture. We've been doing that for ages. Since the dawn of time, we've been sharing each other's culture. But the problem is, is that you're getting mad at individuals who are invoking some of those cultures. A lot of people are getting upset at people who are invoking those cultures at the street level. You shouldn't be directing your anger at those people because those people are doing it the right way. Who you should be directing your ire toward is these companies that are taking advantage of it. You should be directing your ire towards Nike, towards LV, towards Gucci, towards Dolce & Gabbana. Not the dude on the street who you know. Not that dude. He's just, he's, he or her, him or her, they're just, fo they're either following the trend, it's not their fault, or they're really into it. But you don't know that unless you ask them. You got to ask that person, that person on the street. You know if somebody's exploiting the issue and you know if somebody is not. You just know, you know these things. You know it. And when you know it, you never have to worry about somebody taking something from you or not. I believe that's a really big issue in in, in fashion community at large. I believe that's a really big issue at the fashion. Like probably the biggest issue. Probably the biggest issue is this belongs to this belongs to this person. This belongs to this culture and you can't do that. You can't do this. 
Nah. Let them do it. Let them do it. Let them do it. Just do it better. If you're going to complain, you got to do it better. If you're going to complain, you got to do it better. So those are the three biggest issues. One, the one is the judgment, the gatekeeping, the elitism. That's a big issue. Number two is the hyper-consumerism. Really big issue in fashion. Hyper-consumerism, everybody buying the same thing, everybody going for the same thing, not discovering anymore. And three, the whole idea of appropriation and cultural take back. And yeah, that's a convoluted issue. It's really, really difficult to, uh, to break that down. But at its core, culture is meant to be shared, in my, in my honest opinion. Culture is just meant to be shared, but in order for it to be respected, in order for it to be respected, we have to point our finger, we have to point our ire at the individuals that are taking advantage of it, not the person on the street. I, I see people going after individuals on the street all the time with that. You can't do that. Why you have your hair like that? You, you can't wear this. You can't wear that. You can't do this. How are you going to tell somebody what, what they can and cannot wear? Yeah. Like, come on now. Come on now. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do that. That's not, that's unnecessary. That's unnecessary. You got a problem with, you got a problem with Jordans, you know, you got a problem with somebody wearing Jordans because it comes, you know, the, the, the act of wearing them in one community is seen as a cultural aspect. You got a problem with that? Don't take it up with the people that, that are wearing it. Take it up with the companies that are making it. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. Don't get mad at these people. These people are just buying what they think is hot. Well, anything, uh, Spanner, I think anything fashion related is a first world problem. <laughs> right? So we talk in fashion. All of it is, you know, when we talk fashion, it's a first world problem for sure. Right? So let's, uh, let's, let's, Let's debt that real quick. So I'm gonna open it up real quick before I let uh before I head out. Um <laughs> uh before I head out. So let's go ahead. You guys can ask me anything. Um as they scroll by, I will answer some of those questions. Uh so if you got any questions for me or uh that pertain to this issue, or if you want to know something in general, let me know. Uh Hey, yo, Big Potato. Yes, the cap is undercover. Um, I'm an undercover um, fan, so I like undercover a little bit. But I actually, to be honest with you, I, um, I wear undercover. I don't really have that many undercover pieces in the closet, right? So what's an unusual hobby that I have? Unusual hobby? I don't think it's unusual, but I, I play, I play uh, open world games. Um, you guys are fast. Uh, no, I'm not that excited about the undercover Eva collab. Not to be to be honest with you. Um, thoughts on Wave Runners in 2021? If you like them, you like them. Although I think that that's one of Kanye's better sneakers. Uh, do you want to live in Japan for the rest of your life? Where else would you like to live? Um. I'd like to take at least a few months in the UK, but Japan is home. Um, did you, you shouting out a bunch of Japanese? Did I hear about Kanye shouting out a bunch of Japanese designers on the album? I don't listen to Kanye West, so uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, it's so odd for people forcing you to use your own culture. Sounds pretty conservative to me. Uh, yeah, that's that's ridiculous. Uh, Reggie, do you have a favorite anime? I Samurai Champloo. <laughs> uh, I uh, let's see here. Any thrifting tips in Japan? Go everywhere. There's like thousands of thrift stores. I'm scrolling past like a lot of this stuff. Um, 
Are we ready to address the fashion crookery happening with dudes like Matthew and Williams and Virgil Abloh? I thought we was, I thought we would been ready for that. What are your thoughts on human race line in a three fifty V twos in twenty twenty one? Wear what you want, but wear it well. I typically don't like three fifty V twos personally. Um, your take on pre ordering hype pair instead of raffle? I I, I just don't mess with hype stuff. <laughs> I just can't. Um, so either way, for me, I, I'll, although I don't think raffles are safe anymore. Hey, man, got any recommendation for budget techwear jackets? You can go to any functional brand store uh, and, and, and kill it in techwear. Uh, what do you think of designers just copying straightwear, street skatewear? Bound to happen. Um, uh No, I mean, we actually have a techwear video coming out, but more about, you know, the background of it. And I just think that people have a misconception of what techwear is. Um, what music do I like? Pretty much everything. Uh, I like the days when YouTubers have brands. And what happened with your brand, Mr. Casual? Um, well, you're watching it. <laughs> Think about a brand is, man. A brand doesn't have to sell, uh, brand doesn't have to sell clothes, right? So, um... So like the casual is the casual. That's the brand that we run. What Japanese trends do you see coming to the West? You guys are wearing the same things Japanese dudes are wearing. Do you believe mental illness and fashion in the lines of the world changing so much money? Yeah, of course. Please stop calling it tech wear. <laughs> I mean, that's the general usage, but we know what it means. Um, what's your go-to kombini food? I don't really eat from the convenience anymore. Right? I just don't. Uh, there it is. Uh, where do you see yourself in like five to ten years with goals you want to be? That's a, uh, that's a, uh, it's a weighted question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know, but that's way too long of an explanation. Thoughts on New Balance? Most, most, uh, Most comfortable shoes ever. Are you better off as a designer copying someone else's brand at the beginning to get more notoriety than it is to get bigger, slowly implement your own original? Uh, I don't think you should ever go out of your way to copy unless you're trying to be like a cheaper version of something. Uh, so you see a trend moving towards Gorb Core since people want to go outside more due to Gorb. I think you don't have to worry about what the trends are um, going towards. If you want to try Gorb Core, try it. But if you want a, a quick uh, an answer. I think Gorb Core was already becoming a strong thing after um, in like 2018, 2019. I think Gorb Core was coming back. Outdoor brands were coming back easily. Um, I don't wear Hoka shoes. Um, uh, where do you see androgynous clothing heading in popular culture as a whole? More and more people uh, are going to be engaging in androgyny. Uh, but I think a lot of people, they take androgyny the wrong way. They usually think that androgyny somehow means feminine, but androgyny means genderless, which means that it, in a lot of cases, androgynous brands have no form, right? There is no form that says a woman or a man should wear this, and, and it's more formless. And I think the biggest problem that it, people have with when they hear androgynous, they think of dudes wearing feminine things, right? Um... And, and that's not really the case. Like androgyny literally, like you can look at, you know, any androgynous brand or any androgynous brand is really just formless, right? It's not anything, it's anybody could wear it. So when you see a dude wearing a skirt, like that's made for a woman, like that has a woman's shape, because obviously men and women have different shapes. I don't want to get into this entirely, uh, um, um, an entire debate over, oh, that you're trying to say that skirts are for women. Like women have a certain body type. Come on now, let's not have this conversation make it convoluted. Women have a certain body type that's different from males, right? So if you're wearing a pencil skirt that is made for women's hips, right? <laughs> like that's just how it's made. It's made to form uh, on a lady, right? But there are androgynous skirts. 
right? Like there are androgynous skirts where a particular type of skirt that's cut a particular way for a woman's body, that's different, right? That's different. That's a feminine, that's a more feminine piece being worn by a dude. That is not androgynous because it's not, it's not genderless. It's just a dude wearing a skirt that's made for a lady, right? That's it. Made for a woman's body type. What do you feel the need to simplify your... Uh, why do you feel the need to simplify your concept to reach a broader audience? Your audience is generally sophisticated. Um, why do you feel the need to sim simplify your concepts to reach a, uh, to reach a broader audience? Your, um... You know what? I think we'll end it on that question because I think that that is a very good question. I think that a lot of people um, are probably wondering why we're doing that. Um, and that's a big contention. I know a lot of people were like, yo, you already have a sophisticated community. Why would you dumb it down for, um, for a broader community? And that is because... Uh, That is because you need more. Um, that is because you need more individuals to be a part of the conversation. There is no benefit in cutting people out. I don't want to talk. Uh, I don't want to talk to the same individuals all the time. I want to invite individuals to the conversation. So I, you know, I don't want to feed into if if my. If my audience is sophisticated, then I want them to share that sophistication with other individuals. There's no point in talking to the same individuals the entire time. I, I don't feel uh, that that gets us nowhere. That gets us nowhere. Nobody learns anything. Nobody. Nobody learns anything. Nobody's a part of the conversation. I'm talking to the same people. You're just talking to the same people and you're just making yourself feel better. And I'm being confirmed every single time. Uh, you want more people to be a part of the conversation. You want more people to be, you want more people to be even more sophisticated. The amount of people that have talked, uh, that have spoken to me about how like, yo man, you open my eyes to this idea. You open my eyes to this idea. Uh, you open my eyes to this idea, right? That I get more excited about that I get more excited about that than when somebody who's like, yo, man, you so right. Like, you remember this, this, that, who can talk to me back and forth about fashion or about anything like that. I, I really do. You know? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think, I think, you know, when you talk about like watering down, you got to you got to give people a chance to be a part of it. Why would I close the door, right? Um, why would I close the door if more people would be interested? And the only way that I can get them interested is by and letting them experience everything that you know we experience as a community. That doesn't mean that I abandon the people that got me to this place, but it means that why not open the door to people who would more or less, who would more or less love to have that conversation, but I'm not letting them in because my community is already sophisticated. Right? And uh and so I see some of you. I don't think Reg, the casual and Reggie is just Japanese fashion. I think his videos open up. Yeah, that that's really what the point is. Our thing is Japanese fashion, right? Like that's how we, you know, that's how uh, that's how most people kind of were introduced to the casual. Um, and we still talk about Japanese fashion. There's not things, you know. There's sometimes, but another part of the casual is the business side. There's a whole other side that's business oriented, right? So. That is more than just Japanese fashion. So the, I don't think a lot of people kind of understand the sophistication of our um, of our community. Um, 
half of you, like a good half of you, a good chunk of you are like Japanese fashion, sophisticated fashion, enduring, like incredibly like knowledgeable about fashion. Uh, probably I'd say about 15% of you are like streetwear centric or like street coming from a street perspective and then really into Japanese fashion. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of you who are into the business, right? Um, and that's, that's also great. I will tell you this, by talking about these things in a more open way, I'm able to introduce people to more of a, uh, uh, to more explore Japanese brands, right? Right? So I say things like, yo, silhouette driven brands, but really that's a euphemism for, you should check out some of these underground Japanese brands. But I can't just say, check out this Japanese brand. And to be completely honest with you, the lights gotta stay on everybody. Like I love the support. I love all of you guys. I love everybody that supports the channel. But just truth be told, the lights gotta stay on. This is a this is basically a full-time gig next to the consulting thing. And we need more people to be a part of the conversation to keep this thing going. Right? We just need more people. <laughs> right? You just need more people. Right. And, and I think there's a lot of people who are going to just say, oh, well, that's the real reason. Right. That's the real reason. And it's part of the reason. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. It's part of the reason. But I'm not going to but I'm going to try to make it as open as possible with that goal. If that is the reason. Right. Yeah. You know, if, if that is the reason then we gotta find a way, we gotta find a silver lining in that. And I know a lot of people don't trust that, but we gotta find a silver lining in the fact that yes, I gotta eat, right? I gotta keep the lights on, but we gotta find a silver lining where how can we help at the same time? That's it. Every, thank you, everybody eats. That's it. When we talk, like, I, I remember one day, I'll give you an example. I remember one day we talked about Neighborhood Japan. And Neighborhood Japan is a, is a big brand, right? In Japan. Um, Neighborhood Japan is a, is a pretty big brand. But when we put out this video one time, nobody wanted to talk, uh, watch it except people who already knew about it. People who already knew about it wanted to watch it, but nobody who, anybody, nobody else was really messing with it. And it, and it, you know, at that time, it really hurt me because I was like, yo, we're the channel of Japanese fashion. Anybody want to know about Japanese fashion, they could just come to the casual. But nobody wanted to talk about it. Like the only people who wanted to talk about it were the people who already knew about it. And if we're talking to the same individuals who already know about these things, then we're not opening it up at all. And, and you're closing it off. And then effectively what you're doing is you are gatekeeping. Right? You are gatekeeping. I want, I want more. I want more people to be introduced to it so they know that they have another option. So somebody who likes Carhartt, who doesn't know about neighborhood Japan, can, can be like, yo, man, if you like Carhartt, Check out Neighborhood Japan. They got some stuff that you might like. They got some stuff you might like. Not everything, but they got something. Oh, John Lawrence Se Sullivan, Bedwin and the Heartbreakers, Bed J.W. Ford. Yeah, I know about all those labels. I like Bed J.W. Ford uh, and uh, Bedwin and the Heartbreakers and Ware Bobson. Um, so yeah. I'd hope to interview Japanese designers, but you know, interviews are difficult to manage. Um, so that's all. Uh, uh, that's 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 all it is. It really is. It's finding ways for us to. Um... <laughs> Yo, you guys are awesome. I love Brits. Come on now. How am I looking to expand the casual? Um, 
we want to make it into a hub where we just want to make that the community better, right? We want to take what came before us, you know, companies like Complex Hype Beast and High Snobiety, and we want to make it, uh, I really appreciate the Ferris Speed, and we really want to make it into, I really appreciate it, thank you so much. Um, we really want to make it into something that's approachable, cultivate the community into something where people can actually talk to each other without just looking at fashion like it's yay or nay, picking winners and losers, um, and and allowing individuals to choose what they like instead of just giving them what's what we think will get clicks. Um, that's what we really want to turn it into. But we have to play that game, right? We have to play the game in order to win it. And if we just try to say, oh, we have our own little group over here and nobody can be a part of it, I think that that's counterproductive. I, I personally think that that's counterproductive. Some people will be like, no, 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 it's a space where I can be and I can, but I think that you guys, every single last one of you out there um, can be teachers. Like, I think you guys can be educators. And I think running away from, running away from that, I don't say it's a, I wouldn't say it's your responsibility, but if you love fashion and yes, Richie, we, you can expect more chats like this and thank you so much. Um, if you love fashion, you should be willing to share it with individuals who may not get it yet. Right? You don't have to be upset at the industry and how things are happening. If you're willing to open the door for these individuals who could be in your camp. They could be in your camp, but you're saying they just like hype. They just do this and they're all about this. It's like, nah, man, let's try to bring them in. Let's try to bring them in. Like, that's my whole thing. I, I, I hope that we can do that. It's like bring them in and give them more insight and let them know that they have a an abundance of choices. That's always been like our way. Like let people know that they had a lot of choices rather than the choices that are presented to them. And that's the direction that I want to go. Right? That that's that's where I feel like we can have it. But we have an angle, right? Right? Um we have an angle. We have the Japanese one. Right? Um, I, I don't, I'm not concerned with most people. I'm concerned with what we can do, right? And yeah, I'm just more concerned with what we can do. I'm more concerned with how we can change that, how we can change that perspective. Do you think the Gordos hype is chilled? No, <laughs> Gordos will forever be hype, right? Because there's too big of a community that likes this stuff. Um, shout out and shout out to the late Goros. Um, so yeah, that, that's all there is to it. You guys will still get, um, you know, the videos that you like, right? You'll still get WTH. Um, you'll still get, you know, these kind of conversations like this, the state, you'll still get all of that stuff. These more sophisticated conversations. Um, you'll still get that, right? Um, half the time when we're doing like these, we're just doing tests. Um, we're doing tests to see what, what works, what doesn't work, but you're still going to get that. You're still going to get these sophisticated conversations that'll get people involved. That'll, you know, a little, be a little bit more, um, forward thinking and a little bit more, you know, um, you know, in depth. Uh, but sometimes we get to have some fun. Plus it's our channel. We get to have fun. Let's have some fun too. Let's not just be brooding over fashion, right? I don't like the brooding aspect of it. It's like, yes. You know, what was his inspiration behind this? It's like, yo, it's casual, man. Like we can have fun with it and we can open the door. We can have a good conversation with individuals and have a great time with something that we all love. And bringing more people into the fold is is something that um, I'm going to try. I'm going to continue to try to do. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. I got um, so as long as you got the fire intros, I'm always down for whatever you bring. Hey, no doubt. No doubt. Once again, I want to thank everybody that gave um uh um that gave you know some super chats uh you didn't have to do that but 
I love it. Uh, and I, I hope you guys will come along in this journey with us even more. Uh, and thank you. I mean, I don't even know what to say. I really appreciate it. Uh, for introducing me to a grand kimono jacket. Uh, no doubt. Um, so, Robin Gibbons wore in Boomerang. That dress was dope in Boomerang. Uh... I will when you give me black insight. I don't know what that means. Um, and you've been writing in caps the whole time. I just decided to like not respond to you because I thought you were just upset. But um, maybe one day we can have a, a civil conversation about it. <laughs> maybe one day. Um, <laughs> maybe one day. In any case, um, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion culture and business from Tokyo. It's your boy. Keep it casual. Um, and I will see you guys in a minute. Deuces.